I'm going to show you how to use Inkscape here for a few moments to actually change the nature of a file from the Inkscape file to a DXF file. Now I've shown in other videos how to actually do the drawings. I'm going to make a very simple drawing right here just simply to show you how this works. First thing I've got to do is I open up Inkscape and it takes a moment for it to boot up in the machine. Now this is a Linux machine rather than a Windows based machine so your orientation is slightly different in it but not terribly different. The two programs are compatible enough you should be able to figure your way around. For example, when I look at my Windows based machine my toolbox is right down here instead and it is not in this program right here. If I want to change the settings here I go up to file and I go to document properties instead. Now that allows me to change from I've got it set as default inches you want to make sure that you're in inches. If you don't want to see the sheet of paper that's on there you can click on this to remove the border I like to have it on because it gives my students a little bit of an idea how big the object that they're going to cut is relative to a 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. That way they kind of know how much they're going to spend on the object that they're going to cut out. But you can change that background as well just by the custom size, height and width. I don't usually do that. The big thing that I do is make sure that they're in inches and uh, in the default units and on the custom size. If you're using Windows, you have to change that in every document. Make sure that you do that the very first thing. Once I've got uh, the object now, I'm going to just quickly generate an object like that. And I want to address the size. If you go to the top, that's width of six. I'm going to make it a width of two and I'm going to make it a height of two. I'll show you why in just a second. Now this is the black image. I could change its color to black, to white, to red, anything I want to cut. Since we're going to be making it out of metal, I choose to do it in black like this. The next thing I'm going to do with that, I've shown you on other videos, is to go till I'm, I'm going to go object to path. And you see it now has four nodes down here on this layer. It's just altered that in that nature. Now I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to show you the next step. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a hole out of it. So I make my hole tool. Oh, wait a minute. That didn't give me anything. Oh, yeah, that's because it's black. If I set it at white, now I can move that white to the center like this. I can establish my height at one and my width at one. I just luckily did it. That, you know, they came to that size when I got done. I'm going to text to path or object to path like this now. So I now have four nodes on that layer. While it's activated, I'm going to hit the shift key and click on the background so that I can come up to path and I'm going to go difference. When I hit difference on it, what it does now, it makes that and cuts that hole out. You can see how it looks like right there. At this point, I'm done with this one. This is a very simplistic test I run every time. I go to cut something, make sure my machine is working properly. At this point, if I were to hit save as, it'll save it as an SVG file. If you're on a Windows machine, I usually, when I'm doing them, I save them as an SVG because that's the one I can always modify. But on my machine out in the plasma room, I'm going to leave it as a DXF file. They have to be changed to a DXF file and named before I can actually cut it. So now on that one, I'm going to call this test square. I'm going to call it testing square because I've already got test square down here that I've done several other times. I'm now going to save that as a DXF file. As I do that, it's going to say, you want it in inches? Yes. Latin, default, and uncut on the plasma and you simply say OK. Once you've done that, if you were to close the program out now like that, it's going to say, do you want to close without saving? Yeah, you already saved it. So it's now closed. If you were to import, instead of generating it from scratch right there, it's very similar 
you come up and go import and you're looking for something let me go into my desktop into my cut projects into my Anderson's folder and I'm going to look for an SVG file like this nameplate holder that, so I've now imported an object and then I would go and file save as save it as a DXF and it's just fewer steps so I generate my images in my classroom and then I convert them out here when you do you need to make sure that they're the width and height that you want them clicking up here this is 26 inches wide and 4 inches high that's what I need for my nameplate base I know I'm okay so now as I save it as a DXF I'm ready to move on to the next step so I've already shown you how to do that I'm now going to stop no I do not want to save it